Well, all this week we've been talking about how to live out our Christian life in a very practical way. And Paul said essentially it involves putting off the old life and taking on the new life in Christ. And we've kind of explored what that means in broad and general senses. But where we're at right now is where Paul goes on to say in, in verse 5 that we need to put off our earthly nature. We need to put that earthly nature off. And by earthly nature, he means those things that uh, come from my sin nature. That I have my physical body, which is not evil, but it has a drive, a passion in it, which really likes to say no to God and even to goodness and pursue whatever brings me greatest pleasure. Uh, the picture of Eve in the garden being tempted that she saw the fruit was good to be eaten and she saw it would make her wise so she could become like God. Well, essentially God had said no to that fruit, but her human nature said yes. And when she said yes, something happened. Some people speculate maybe there was a genetic mar that came into human character or whatever. But at that moment, we began to have a flesh that was dominated by a spiritual nature, a sin nature that drives us to make choices that are contrary to the will of God. You know, even uh, good people many times can spend a lot of times rationalizing bad behavior, bad decisions. And uh, they can lie, they can cheat, and they steal, and somehow say to themselves, well, you know, it's not really lying, it's not really cheating, it's not really stealing. You know, it's kind of like, well, the government takes too much of my taxes and, and they waste the money anyway, so why should I give them all? I'll just stick it a little over here so they can't get to it. And the bigger problem is that God sees, God knows. And he unfortunately said to us, pay taxes to whom taxes are due. So if you don't like paying taxes or you like don't like a particular tax, then you should, uh, well, as my t-shirt says, go and vote and <laughs> elect people who will go the other way. But don't spend your time withholding your taxes until you get your way or you end up in jail. But anyway... Putting off the uh, the old nature, what is that old nature? We listed the what they were. They were sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, and idolatry. Uh, I want to take the rest of our time today and, and really kind of, you know, expand and explode those concepts a little bit so that we can understand the broad applications. And for the most part, this first list, and there is another list that we'll get to uh, next week, but this first list are things that are pretty evident, pretty much out in the surface. surface. They're outward behaviors that people engage in that people who know God's word, people who have the spirit of Christ living in them can look at those things and say, that's, that's wrong, that's evil, that's not of God. Well, the first one is sexual immorality. Uh, pornia is a, a broad word in the, in the Greek language. It means every and any illicit or forbidden form of sexual intercourse of any kind. So it, it covers everything. It covers adultery, fornication, uh, homosexuality, uh, the whole LGBTQ gamut of behaviors. And you can add a plus and a and this and that and a question mark. It covers that whole gamut of using sex outside of the one context where God said it is allowable. And that's in a, a monogamous relationship between a man and a woman. That any kind of sexual behavior, even if it's just viewing pornography on the internet, is, is pornia. It's, it's forbidden behavior. It's something that God says you should not do. And that's why it includes of any kind. We live in a challenging culture because we live in a culture that says that pornia is the way to find happiness. That is the message that's coming from the culture that sexual things that were once illicit and forbidden now, forbidden waters are sweet as Solomon put it in Proverbs. So, you know, you need to expand your horizons. You need to dip your toe in every pond that you find. And what the Bible says, if you engage in these things, what comes is a catastrophe. I love the way he puts it in Proverbs 6 when he says, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Well, the thing I understand that if you try to pick up fire, your hands are going to be burned, your clothing are going to catch fire, you're going to be burned, it could kill you. And so the illustration is really, really poignant, very clear. And he's saying that when you engage in sexual immorality, you're picking up fire and there's no way that it can't damage you. You're going to be damaged as a consequence of it. So if you're a teenager and you want to sleep with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever the combination is that you're looking at, you have to understand that that's going to bring damage into your life. You're going to suffer a consequence for that later on in your life. And I don't just mean pregnancy, but even if people try to hide the pregnancy by having an abortion, all those things leave a mark. 
And the more we go in that direction, the deeper the marks are, the deeper scars, and the more debilitating that becomes to our lives. So there's a reason why God said, thou shalt not. It's because he doesn't want you to be hurt. It's because he loves you, because he doesn't want you to be damaged by the choices that you're making. The second thing oftentimes gets confused because it, he says, secondly, all impurity. And what impurity means, and the original word here means uh, excess and extravagant indulgence. This could be any kind of gluttony or drunkenness, anything that you do to the extreme. I remember when, when uh, pot became legalized in the state of Washington, I had people ask me, well, now that it's legal to smoke pot, is it all right for me as a Christian to smoke pot? <laughs> and I, I pointed out to him, first of all, just because something is legal doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's good. And now as we're discovering more and more about the long-term effects of people who smoke marijuana, uh, cannabis, uh, we can easily say that's really not a wise thing to do. That's going to have a damaging effect upon you. Because what, first of all, it's an intoxicant that distorts your view of reality, not just at that moment, but also it stays in your system for at least 30 days. So when Paul said, I, I will not be brought under the power of anything, this is an example of a power that we get brought under and it affects us in a very negative way. And so he's saying anything that that is an extreme and extravagance. There's many people saying, well, I, as a Christian, I have the right to drink alcohol. And I can't tell you that it's, that it's unbiblical because it doesn't, but what it does clearly say is that it, alcohol is an intoxicant. And if you're not careful, it's gonna distort your judgment. And as, Paul, uh, as Solomon said, you'll start making bad choices, bad decisions, even decisions like getting behind the wheel of a car or being in a compromising relationship with another person. You'll find yourself doing something that you really learned to regret, not because you got caught at it, but because you chose to transgress and go across lines that if you had been sober, you never would have done. And so, yeah, I can't tell you it's wrong to do it. I'm just saying you need to understand it is an intoxicant. It's going to affect you the way you look at the world around you. So be careful with that. And that, that applies to all sorts of medications. That just because a doctor prescribes medication to you doesn't need, mean that you need to take it or continue to take it. I've known so many people who start off on strong psychotropic job thing drugs to help them with their uh, with uh, their stress or problems in their life, or they've gotten on painkillers. And long after the painkiller wasn't needed, they were continuing to use those painkillers and they became severely addicted to it. And that's the whole point, that any kind of excess or extravagant indulgence, things that we continue to do and that are not necessary, becomes what he calls an impurity. And we need to repent of that. The third one he puts is lust. And that means you have an inordinate affection for something. And in fact, it's the idea that I think the one word that, that may be part of it is, is the word more. It's where you just have to have more and you pursue things. And sometimes it's pursuing things that are evil. But also I think about simple things like I know, you know, my son and some of his, one of my sons and some of his buddies, once a week they get together and they play on their Xbox, uh, some kind of video game. And it's kind of a fun thing that they do. But I think about people who begin to, you know, not work and live in their basement playing video games at their parent or at their parents' house, and that's all they do. They're they're obsessed with it. That's an inordinate affection where this is what they have to do. Or I've seen people who just aren't Facebook or on Twitter. Or they live on the in these environments and they never step out into the real world and interact with people. That's that's what he would call a lust. It's an it's a thing that takes away self control and becomes dominating. It's a thing you look forward to. I can't wait to get home to click on my computer so I can play my video games. That's a trap that you can get caught in. And then he says, fourthly, there are evil desires. It's simply desiring things that you know are wrong, things that are forbidden, things that we might call wicked, or and because what they are ultimately is destructive. So when God says, thou shalt not do something, he doesn't say that because he wants to take all the fun out of your life. He's just saying those things are destructive behaviors. So if you start desiring something that you know isn't right, then you know it's going to take you in a direction that's going to become self-destructive. That's where I kind of pop back to the old idea of pornography, especially internet pornography, that people can access in secrecy and not let other people know. You have to understand that what you visualize and what you look at and what you think about begins to change the way your brain processes information. 
and you start walking around with that perverted, twisted way of looking at life. And I just say, those are evil desires. And you need to just basically say, that's not a God. I'm not going there. There are whole TV shows that I've started watching and my wife would look at and I go, nope. And we've turned them off because we didn't see that coming and we have no interest in filling our head with that kind of stuff. It's just developing that discipline to say, I'm, I'm not going there. I don't want to be part of that. And then lastly, Paul hits on the issue of greed. And greed is, is the endless desire for more and more and more. And he says all of these things are really just nothing more but idolatry. Well, I'm over time and, and don't have time to go in deeper into talking about idolatry, but I, I certainly want to uh, next week. So look forward to getting together with you, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or just at calvary.com, calvaryspokane.com. I'll look forward to continuing these broadcasts with you. Go in his grace. Many blessings.